Hello, Perfect Death here, back with Victory Bells again, and I was thinking about doing a video, and I thought, why not do my uh, Schleswig-Holstein grinding? Because I'm at 31 out of 122 vestures, so that's quite a ways off. Uh, she's one of the event bells. I got the um, Manchester, the other one. She did not take very long because, you know, being UK, I get a bonus to getting UK ships. So that was quick. So now I'm on the, the uh, Schleswig-Holstein grind. And while I was doing that, I started looking at building a heavy, a heavier cruiser fleet. So I got four heavy cruisers. Ashgara Pensacola from the last event heavy cruisers got Exeter who was my first heavy cruiser um, she's pretty light you can just guess by her HP comparing it to some of the light cruisers these are the town class light cruisers and there are about same size if not bigger like they even have you know 1.7 2000 though these are higher level but these are the newer, slightly newer versions of the town class than Southampton. But Exeter is like 1.3 ship weight capacity. So um, relatively similar size, but Exeter is, is tiny. She's only got like three 8 inch guns compared to like Belfast, which is four, six triple inch guns. But Exeter sometimes gets MVP just because she slaps hard with 8 inch guns. But Shropshire is the newer-ish one. I recently got her from the some of the recent farming I've been doing. She's a bigger, older heavy cruiser compared to, to Exeter, who's a treaty warship that the British designed. And then the, after building that, they decided not to do any more um, heavy cruisers and just go for just tons of light cruisers. But um, Shropshire has four 8-inch guns, and I recently just swapped out a bunch of her kit. Um, for some of my developed um, range finders and the range keepers here. And she's also got the, um, I swapped out her secondaries, which were these like single, um, I don't know which one exactly she had, but I think it was these ones actually, because she had eight single four inch 45 guns and I swapped them for these um, which I've leveled or not leveled up I fully are indeed them to discover all of their traits and stuff and so these are actually kind of nice because they have really good they have a trait or a, a quirk which is this gold one that's for um extra accuracy and damage in really bad weather BFT stands for Beaufort um, it's this Beaufort scale for winds basically so stormy weather rough rough seas due to high winds so worry, um Captain. let's see i'm gonna zoom swoosh on over to iberian approaches because this is where der Zeitsk, or their zeitgeist is and this is actually where i got shropshire farmed but there's uh algeri who's actually a really good CA from what I hear here. There's of course Schleswig Holstein here, and then there's two subs that I've gradually accumulating, I guess, but there's quite a few in this pool. But the basics of this mission in particular is there's an enemy here, there's an enemy here, but this one will move down here, and then there's at least like two enemies, I think, down here. So I've got five ammo. Um, generally, I can clear this without having to reload the enemies down here. One of them usually moves up to here and then another one kind of like legs around down here for a little bit. Now, there is a bit of a bug I found out with um, Shropshire where uh, her scouting planes, if I just put one into here, it's 99% scouting chance, which is mm, insane. So I'm pretty sure that's a bug because generally scouting scales based off of range. Your chance gets lower the farther you go. And so, you know, 
like 13 of my other scouting planes have a 50% chance to detect something really close by. Meanwhile, one, because because I made her the flagship, she's the first one in the line. And so I was testing this out just to confirm, is it her scout planes? And uh, she's got one scout plane, and that one scout plane has a 99% detection chance. Now, I also found out, at least I'm pretty sure, sending scout planes actually makes you easier to detect from by enemy aircraft carriers because um, they kind of see the the traffic of float planes going to and from your your stuff so then they can figure out roughly where you are and i think there's usually an aircraft carrier sometimes around here or a cvl morgana and they tend to airstrike me when i go to this node but there's rain in this node so we're totally fine um, there's also a resource here I don't know what it is. I think I might be capped on that particular resource. I haven't figured out what, what it is, but there's a resource node there. So generally I just go from here down to this node here, then to the middle one, then down to here. I might have to run around and chase one of them, but at least I hit that resource node. So, so. Oh, looks like there is a carrier here. Now, again, because I was easier to detect due to the scout, that tends to happen, I find. Um, when I don't use my scouts, I find I get f airstriked a lot less. So, yeah, so you can see the delusion. Did a couple of airstrikes. Now, you do have fleet ammo for, I guess, chasing off aircraft. And that's this uh, middle one here. And that one lets you deter airstrikes coming at your aircraft. So that's pretty useful. But it's actually... Now this fight... Some of these fights are pretty difficult just because Shropshire is pretty low level. So she tends to take a bit of a beating now. Her fleet tactics actually give her barrage fire, which apparently gives a gunnery bonus of some kind. So, um, another thing in terms of heavy cruiser guns, um, Pensacola's guns are in very short range, even though they shouldn't be. I think it's because of their elevation angle. So, I think what you would want to do with Pensacola's guns is R&D and modify them to have a higher firing angle because you can see she's still not shooting. The Towns with her 6 inch guns are shooting and Pensacola is still not shooting. So and then ammo explosions and stuff. So now it should get really damaging. I think we are medium range right now. You can kind of guess by the chevron count. And it looks like their second group and third... Second group in particular must be on flank speed or something because they are just charging. Which puts them really close. Uh, they're just getting blasted. Now the Treason is a type of battleship and the Delusion's a carrier, a light carrier. So they're not taking any advances towards us so they're trying to keep distance. And then we have group three here, which is their destroyers. So they, I think they're in torpedo range now by the looks of it. No, nope. So that's us firing our torpedoes now because we're close to them. This can be a bit of a waste for um, your torpedoes because you can see we shot them all at this light cruiser, which isn't the easiest target compared to battleships and heavy cruisers and carriers but um, once they get within that torpedo range it triggers the torpedo attacks so yeah we can see they're getting beaten we're doing pretty well so far but so far, Shropshire hasn't taken any damage. Usually she's the first two because she's the lowest level. She's the newest one in the group. We're back to an artillery phase. And yeah, you can see uh, Pensacola is now contributing 
some firepower, which is probably why she tends to not get MVPs any in these recent battles that I've been doing. So I think it's just the angling of her turrets or something. Well, probably want to check that out. Yeah, now we're drawn in. Um, we can see the fog on Ashigara. This means that she has run out of reserves and therefore she's withdrawn because she doesn't have any more ammo to continue fighting. And yeah, we can see most of these others are out of ammo. Except for Southampton and Pensacola. So a big part of why this was having so much trouble was because they staggered their fleets to arrive here. I'm so sorry, Captain. All right. You know, Captain, I think we may have hit her. And that's forced my fleet to use up a lot of their reserves fighting this screen, but Fortunately, because Pensacola took so long to get there, um, you can see that she didn't actually you know, use up so much. So this is one of those rare times where she actually did get the MVP. Um, usually, she doesn't, but I've never really had that situation happen where I can't draw close enough, fast enough. But usually I'm running Ashigara as my flagship, and she has flank speed as her tactics. And... Shropshire doesn't have flank speed. Instead, she prefers her. Um, she got. She has barrage fire at long range, but we're going into the rain, and so this will bring us really close to each other. In fact, I'll just switch it down to one time speed because this is going to be a bloodbath. Usually, it's a bloodbath. So surprise phase. We got some torpedoes and miss. Ah, only one torpedo during that surprise phase. But yeah, even at close range, is because they're so close. We've got it. You're gonna take quite a bit of damage as well, so Shropshire is taking hits. But so far, we've got the bigger damage scaling. I am over leveled for this fight, but that makes it cheaper on repairs. And you can do more farming because you're not spending so much time repairing. And there's torpedo hits. Three torpedoes. That ship is sunk. Ashgar's got the uh, Japanese long lance torpedoes, which are nasty to see compared to the British ones. Hers were like almost a thousand more damage. But yeah, Shropshire there got the MVP and she's the flagship, so she gets a nice EXP bonus. That's why I kept her as the flagship. I want her to catch up a little bit on levels. And there should be another fight in the same node because there's usually two I find on this map at the same time. Except this one is just a sabotage and a sedition. So those are two different battleships. <clears throat> Yeah, nice close range. Kablam, blam, blam. Oh, Shropshire is on fire. Lots of numbers. Yeah, both of them have guns aiming at Shropshire, so she's definitely taking a lot of hits. And she's going to take a fair bit of fire damage because of that. But the other ship also burned down. So I've got one fight left, and that is the ship down here who is moving over to this direction. I am going to move down here just so. Ah, well, they moved there anyway, but just because you might as well move on to the resource node anyway. So we'll see how good this goes, because there are a lot of light ships in this one. Light cruisers and destroyers. And so artillery phase, let's see. Oh, we're not actually that far away if Pensacola's already shooting. Uh, 
And... Interesting formation. They've got one destroyer in a entirely separate division on its own, but looks like they probably all have the same same fleet speed tactic. Yeah, surprise phase. We don't have torpedoes now, so it looks like they are doing their torpedo attacks. This is a torpedo run where they move one chevron forwards and then pull one chevron back. Boom. It's a small hits. Yeah, we're gonna move up closer. And another surprise phase. That should be the others firing more torpedoes. It's kind of nice that they prioritize Ashigara. Um, she's actually got a lot of compartments, so she can take a lot of torpedo hits before she sinks. And I've also made sure to give her at least four fire director redundancy so that she has more spotting opportunities against torpedoes. Looks like there's just one ship left. Almost burned down. And then blam. Okay, so there was four manpower that we picked up off of that resource node. So if you've had to fight over it, then it will show you what it is during the victory screen here. And Shropshire got the MVP and the flagship bonus. And since this was the last map battle for the campaign, you get the extra campaign bonus there so yeah she got like 500 exp which is great for helping her catch up because the others are 200 so it's always good to try and flagship um whoever you want to level up and we'll just go over and do my repairs two minute and 30 something second repair i think we found out something interesting Captain. and one of the things I've also been doing is trying to get some of the R&D done on, for example, another fire director. This one's a four redundancy fire director. I want to see what um, what its um, perks and traits are, but I don't think I've discovered them yet. I only know a little bit of it, so back into the R&D cycle. And researching the quad two-pounder anti-aircraft gun, that's to try and protect my ships from airstrikes, basically. There, from what I've learned, when you want to set up like your air defenses, um, there's a couple of layers that you can consider when you're setting up anti-aircraft stuff so one is dual purpose guns so these four inch 45s that um, exeter has here i put them on she didn't used to have these she used to have like these guns or something or these one of the two uh, but these have a elevation angle of 80 which is pretty good for dual purpose um and these are also 80s, right? But these are, you know, twins. These are singles. So um, I just decided to try out these ones because I had them laying around. But basically, some of the guns you'll find are like this one here, 30 degree angle. There's some American guns, for example, that are like 85. So when a dive bomber goes and dives on your aircraft, the elevation angle determines whether or not you can shoot at them with these guns while they're in their dive. And some of the other weapons, for example, like 
this machine gun has an 80 degree one and there's do, 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 do. let's see i wonder if my other ships are repaired some of them are at 100 percent and ready to go belfast for example she has these quad or these octuples which are also 80 percent so the idea with some of this is that for dive bombers dropping down on you having high angle guns allows you to shoot at them the whole way while they approach and dive if you have a low enough like if the angle isn't high enough so take these guns for example with a 40 degree elevation they can shoot at stuff that are attacking other ships but they probably don't have enough of an elevation angle to shoot up high and shoot down stuff that are diving on them so uh, that's one of the reasons why some people go for say the american guns with the 85 degree elevation and the elevation rate these ones are 15s these are three right so that's very bad for tracking a dive bomber dropping down on you so uh, meanwhile these ones are like a 10 these ones are a 12 uh, 50 caliber machine gun here is a 30 so and some of these you can you know transfer perks and traits so you can learn some perks from the like American ones and then you can apply them onto these guns and then increase their elevation rate rate and angles even more so but aside from that I've also been swapping out I've been researching a different um, cruiser gun for my uh, six inch guns six inch gun battery yeah, and then throw into another one of these. I'll just hop in. And you know what? Let's do that. Just the one. Abuse it while I can. So there's nothing to report there until stuff starts to move around. I'm going to show how some of the enemies move. Because... It's empty right now, but that middle point will have two enemy fleets in there by the time we get there. So let's just bring this up to eight times speed. Blah, 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 bam. Yeah, this time we don't have an aircraft carrier hanging back. So we're all gonna get in, stuck in with them pretty quick. So that should be a more reliable clear here. It's actually pretty rare to find this first fight as a aircraft carrier. Oh, looks like Ashigar took one torpedo. She dropped 1% from that one torpedo. She is very resistant to torpedo hits. You can see this little bit of a sliver. Um, usually like one torpedo hit will like bring a red line up to this first wave, halfway along that first wave. That's for like my light cruisers, like Belfast. Doom, doom, doom. But yeah, so when we watch this node, as we approach it, one enemy there, two enemies there, and so then there's a third enemy still like down around this area. So I'm gonna click over here, and we'll get there before they can leave, and get to hit two enemies at one time. Now the scouting bonus apparently does something for your gunnery, but. I'm not exactly sure on how much it improves it. Um, but you can see I don't have a eye mark on my side, which means they haven't scouted where I'm coming from. And sometimes that will allow the enemy aircraft carrier to preemptively prepare aircraft to strike you when you enter into the fight. So scouting can be very useful because you can see right now after many turns she's finally been able to launch a little bit of her aircraft because she's essentially at the start of the fight they start trying to prep aircraft to launch they start pulling them from the hangars getting them on the decks launching them and then there's turns another turn for them to get to you so 
being able to attack carriers when they don't know where you are is a really big advantage or else they'll just start airstriking you at the start of the fight. Sometimes even at max range, at spotting range, which means you have to spend turns sailing towards them, so. And here's the sabotage and sedition fight. As we get closer and closer. Yeah, we can see now they have spotted me. Uh, I think that's because the carrier fight spotted me. And therefore, now they do get a spotting advantage against me. The main concern is that if there's another enemy carrier nearby, they will know where I am. So if there's a carrier down here, they might start airstriking me. So I'm just going to move down here. And... You know, let's put one there. Let's put them there. And start moving over here. Because, yeah, we can see this is the last one. I think they are currently heading up this way. Yeah, so they are going in a loop up this northern spot, but I'll cut them off. And it'll be a night fight. And yeah, they did have a carrier, but they didn't launch for some reason at me. Maybe it was because they were in the progress of moving from one node to another node. And then I moved down before they had a chance to do an airstrike. That's always a possibility. But yeah, look at that. Almost 500 EXP from that one. So. And that's basically it for this particular run. I wanted to bring it up because it is a, you know, HQ level 35 run, it gets pretty difficult if you're not over leveled for it. And yes, my some of my stuff is over leveled, like Belfast is level 84, Edinburgh is level 74. But we can see, you know, sometimes Belfast does get the um, MVP, but a lot of it is the heavy cruisers because by this phase, once you start getting to that HQ 40, um, just the, the weight of eight inch guns can really start to matter against these tankier, you know, Morganas, the, uh, Morgana heavy cruisers and battleships and that. And so I fully expect that this is just going to continue to be a like tonnage scaling trend as we go along. So I've been rotating my destroyers to a secondary fleet and my some of my older light some of my other light cruisers to a secondary fleet so they're still hanging around they're still pretty good leveled um they're still going to be useful for some of those maps that i'll probably need a second fleet but right now they are doing like resource runs so for example there is uh, pusan patrol which gives you a pretty good amount of ammo a little bit of manpower. Actually, this one's a lot of manpower, but... Uh, the other one that I've got... The other one I've got is... Doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh yeah, I sent them on a... an a eight-hour mission, but... This is the one with, the re with Recruit to do training EXP for some of the other ships. So... Anyway... Anyway, I don't think I got any in those two runs. I don't think I got any vestures for the battleship. No, still 31. Sad. But that'll be it for this video. Take care.